Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Before formatting a shape in PowerPoint, you must click it to select it. If selecting a text containing object as a shape, ensure you click its border so its border appears as a solid, not dashed line. That indicates the whole shape is selected. After selecting the shape, the Shape Format Contextual tab then appears in the ribbon. This tab provides common formatting options for the selected shape. At the left end of the Shape Format Contextual tab in the ribbon is the Insert Shapes button group. The large scroll box in this button group contains the shapes you can insert. It functions the same way as the Shapes Buttons drop-down menu on the Insert tab of the ribbon does. To the right of that are the Edit Shape, Text Box, and Merge Shapes buttons. To replace the selected shape with another shape, click the Edit Shape drop-down button, roll over the Change Shape command in the drop-down menu, and then select the new shape from the side menu that appears. To edit the contours of a selected shape, click the Edit Shape button. Then select the Edit Points command from its drop-down menu to show the editing points of the selected shape. Then click and drag these points to change the contours of the selected shape. To reroute the connectors to a selected shape if the shape is connected to other shapes using the connector shape lines, as is often found in a flowchart, Click the Edit Shape button, then select the Reroute Connectors command from its drop-down menu to reset the connectors to the selected shape. To draw a text box that is not associated with placeholder text in a slide, click the Draw Text Box button. This button works the same way as clicking the Text Box button in the Text Button group on the Insert tab of the ribbon, as previously shown in the lesson titled Adding Text to Slides. To apply a preset shape style to a selected shape, scroll through the choices shown in the large scroll box of Preset Shape Styles in the Shape Styles button group on the Shape Format Contextual tab in the ribbon. Then click one you like to apply it to the shape. To apply a custom fill to a selected shape, click the Shape Fill drop-down button. This button lets you fill the inside of a selected shape with a color, picture, gradient, or texture. However, this button is unavailable for shapes without fillable area like lines and arrows. To select a fill color, click a color choice in the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu. To select a custom color, instead select the More Fill Colors command in the drop-down menu to open the Colors dialog box. To then select a custom color in the Colors dialog box, either click the Standard tab and then select one of the colors in the Honeycomb of Color Choices, or click the Custom tab to select a color from the Rainbow Gradient, and then use the slider to the right to change its darkness or lightness. At the bottom of both tabs, you can use the Transparency slider to set the level of color transparency. To apply a selected color, if you open the Colors dialog box, click the OK button. To remove a fill effect from a shape, select the No Fill command from the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu. To insert a picture into your shape as a fill effect, Select the Picture command from the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu to open an Insert Picture dialog box. In this dialog box, click the button for the desired method to use to insert a picture. Then select the desired picture in the associated dialog box or window that appears for the selected picture type. After selecting the picture to use, click the Insert button in the dialog box or window to apply your picture as the background fill. To apply a gradient fill to the selected shape, roll your mouse pointer over the Gradient command in the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu. Then click the Preset Gradient to apply to the shape from the side menu of choices. To add a texture to the shape, roll over the Texture command in the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu. 
Then click the texture to apply from the side menu of choices. To change the line color of a selected shape or change the appearance of shapes that are nothing more than lines like the line shape or the arrow shape, click the Shape Outline button in the Shape Styles button group on the Shape Format contextual tab of the ribbon. Then select a color from the color palette of choices that appears. To remove a line color, select the No Outline Choice from the Shape Outline button's drop down menu. To change the width of the shape's outline, Roll over the Weight command in the Shape Outline button's drop-down menu. Then select from the side menu of choices. To apply a sketched line appearance, roll over the Sketched command in the Shape Outline button's drop-down menu. Then select one of the choices in the side menu that appears. To choose a different dash style, Roll over the Dashes command in the Shape Outline button's drop down menu. Then select one of the choices in the side menu that appears. To change the endpoint shapes, if formatting a line shape or an arrow shape, roll over the Arrows command in the Shape Outline button's drop down menu. Then select a choice from the side menu that appears. To apply a preset effect to a selected shape, Click the Shape Effects button in the Shape Styles button group on the Shape Format contextual tab in the ribbon. Then roll over the Desired Effect category in the drop down menu that appears. Then click the Desired Effect in the side menu that appears. To apply a preset text style to text if you have a text containing object selected, Click to select a desired WordArt style from the list in the scroll box within the WordArt Styles button group on the Shape Format contextual tab in the ribbon. To select a fill effect for the text within a selected text containing object, click the Text Fill drop-down button in the WordArt Styles button group on the Shape Format contextual tab in the ribbon. The choices are the same choices as when you click the Shape Fill drop-down button in the Shape Styles button group. To format the outline of text within a selected text containing object, click the Text Outline drop down button in the WordArt Styles button group on the Shape Format contextual tab in the ribbon. Then select a choice from the drop down menu of choices that appears. The choices are the same choices you have when you click the Shape Outline drop down button in the Shape Styles group without the Sketched or Arrows commands, as those would not apply to text. To apply an effect to the text within a selected text containing object, click the Text Effects drop down button in the WordArt Styles button group on the Shape Format contextual tab in the ribbon. Then roll over the Desired Effect category in the drop down menu that appears. Then click the Desired Category effect to apply from the side menu that appears. To add an alternative text description of a selected shape to help user accessibility, Click the Alt Text button in the Accessibility button group to open the Alt Text pane at the right side of the window. Then type a description of the shape into the large white text box. If the shape is purely decorative, you can skip the description and instead check the Mark as Decorative checkbox to not distract the reader. To close the Alt Text pane, click the X button in its upper right corner. The buttons in the Arrange button group on the Shape Format contextual tab in the ribbon are the same as when formatting pictures as previously shown in the lesson titled Using Picture Tools in the Using Pictures chapter. These buttons also let you arrange, align, group, and rotate the selected shape. If you have overlapping objects in your slide, you can click either the Bring Forward or Send Backward drop down buttons in the Arrange button group on the Shape Format contextual tab of the ribbon to change the order in which the selected shape overlaps others within the stack from the drop down menus that appear. To show or hide the selection pane in PowerPoint, click the Selection Pane button in the Arrange button group on the Shape Format contextual tab of the ribbon. This pane shows selectable objects within a document. 
You can click the Align button in the Arrange button group on the Shape Format Contextual tab in the ribbon to choose from one of the available alignment options. To group together multiple shapes simultaneously selected in your slide, click the Group button in the Arrange button group on the Shape Format Contextual tab in the ribbon. Then choose the Group command from the drop-down menu that appears to group the individual shapes together as a single unit. To ungroup a selected grouped object, click the same Group drop-down button and then select the Ungroup command from the drop-down menu. To rotate or flip a selected shape, Click the Rotate button in the Arrange button group on the Shape Format Contextual tab in the ribbon. Then select a rotation or flipping option for the selected shape in your document. To increase or decrease the height or width of the selected shape, use the spinner arrows at the right end of either the Shape Height or Shape Width text boxes that appear within the Size button group on the Shape Format Contextual tab in the ribbon. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.